Hello, I'm Kevin Toppenberg. I wanted to talk a little bit about my Bridgeport clone. And specifically, I have a J head. And I wanted to talk about how the, the power transmission works. I couldn't find anything uh, about this to my satisfaction on YouTube. So I thought I would share what I figured out in uh, some bumps along the road. First of all, for mounting and unmounting the head, Obviously, this part here has to connect to that part up here, and it's very heavy when it's assembled. So, uh, in a trick that I saw from uh, Tubal Cain, um, Mr. Pete, you can put a bolt um, mounted in the, the slots of the bed and put that into a collet and then connect it. And then that then gives it some uh, ability to go up and down. Let me demonstrate that. So here you can see that the head can go up and down a little bit um, like that. And I found that I needed that additional uh, vertical height because the bed itself will not go up high enough to connect it. But um, the bed all the way up uh, on the Z-axis as far as it'll go and then extend the, the quill and then it was able to get off. I mean, it's tenuous and you got to be careful and uh, a little shaky, but... For me, I didn't have a, an engine lift to be able to uh, get it off otherwise. So roughly speaking, um, the head is uh, comprised of three parts. Uh, I'm, I'm not an expert in this and I'm probably getting my terms wrong, but I'm gonna call this the top, the middle, and the bottom. So the top part has a motor. The motor turns a sp uh, spindle with some pulleys on it. And then to that, a belt uh, attaches. That belt is going to come over to this position. So let me get that next part. From there, there you can see it has this pulley, which will then uh, turn and increase the torque. Now we're going to have the output shaft of this is going to be right here. And this is what it's going to connect to. See, it's got a keyway for a key uh, to prevent slippage. And that will go all the way up there. It has to be pressed on. It's a tight fit. Okay, from there, uh, out of the top part, it's going to go over here to the bottom part. And that's going to fit on there like that. And I'll just tell you that this uh, mill is a restoration project. It received a lot of abuse, uh, had a lot of rust on it. And so this pitting is the best that I could get that cleaned up. All right, now there's two ways that the power can be transmitted. One is through this bottom with those two connecting. And the second way is via this belt. And it goes over to a wheel here. And let me show that. So this um, pulley wheel, um, the belt will go around that shaft and it will turn this part here like that. As that pulley turns, it will turn this gear down there. And that gear, this pulley here normally is down all the way down flat. And those two have the ability to engage. This is your back and, or, and your reverse gears. Um, so when that is down, it does not engage with this. And the only way to transmit power is here. And when it's up, it will engage. And at that point, if both this and this were uh, selected, then the engine couldn't turn because it's uh, trying to turn it both ways. So this part here needs to go up and down. And that's what I'm going to show next. So this uh, pulley wheel here normally has this unit in it like that. And then this goes up through, through the middle, like that. It was like this, coming up through there like that. All right. So now let's look at this unit in a little bit more detail. This unit is will fit up in here like this. Now it's going up and down, and there's some springs 
when I was doing my restoration, I couldn't get this to slide and it was rubbing in here. And that's, you can see where I put the dicum in there and therefore I could see where the tight spots are and I was able to sand that out to get it uh, so that it would slide up. So what makes this thing go up and down? And on the top here, there is this unit that rotates. And you see how that is at an angle and as it rotates, it's going to come up and right through there is going to go a bolt those bolts go into the side there so you can see as that top part is turned it will pull this up and down all right let's talk next about this unit now this unit doesn't look so bad now but when i first got it it was a mess um this is designed to be taken off with this kind of a spanner wrench, like that. But that's not, not always very convenient, so a lot of people will get out there, punch, and they'll start hammering this way, and then that hole gets all bunged up, and it's a big mess. So here I'm going to show you how this uh, turns out. So like that. Now, when I first got mine, it was stuck so hard, I had a hard time even believing that this would come out. I had to go online and search, and sure enough, this was a nut, but I, I despaired for a while getting that out, and I'll talk about that more in a second. All right, so inside here, two bearings go. And, and on my um, system, they are bearing 6207Zs. So one bearing will go down, then these spacers, and then this go down, and that whole unit goes down inside there. And again, that shaft will come up through the middle. This then uh, goes on there, and then this cap, which screws onto the end of the shaft, goes in there. So two things that need to come out with a spanner wrench. Now, getting my, getting this uh, not this nut out. To get this out, I first of all wanted to clean up those holes. So I actually took a quarter inch end mill in my drill press and just went straight down in to try to, to clean that up so I have a, a nice uh, even surface for uh, getting it out. But even with the torque of this and in there, whenever I would turn it, the base would just turn as well. And I had no way to, to hold it tight. I was afraid to put it too tight on the, in a vise for fear that it would make it oval and that the bearings wouldn't fit in there well. So what I did is I uh, machined, this is a 3 8 24, I believe, uh, screw that goes in there. And I made these little pegs that go in there like that. And I made them so that the screw is just the width of that outer part so it wouldn't impact on the inner part. I then took that whole thing and put it in my vise I took these bolt out of this side and this side so there was a good uh, receptacle there. Put that in there like that, and then that was gonna secure that from rotating. I've replaced those bolts now so it doesn't go all the way in, but when I had it, it would go all the way up and it was flush there and flush there. So then using my spanner wrench as I'm trying to turn it, still was being very difficult and this thing just kept jumping out. So I actually got a big C-clamp and clamped that on there at that pivot point very tightly. And then you see I got a mini sledge and just, I figured if I couldn't get it out because the, the bearings were seized up, then I was gonna have to buy a new one. So I just laid into it and finally got it to turn and very happy about that. Now, earlier when I was uh, working on this, I may have actually made the uh, problem worse. I don't actually remember, but I think I was trying to clean up these holes and I thought that it was supposed to go all the way through. So I think I ended up drilling all the way through and then uh, renewing the threads with a tap or, or something, but um, I'm, not sure if, I'm not sure if a normal nut has the, the, the hole in the threads all the way through. I think it gives it more strength to go all the way through. So um, maybe it does. Now. I had to remake these, and I actually don't recall what the originals looked like. I um, I think I was having an issue with getting it uh, back mounted in the hole, so I actually put an outer sleeve and then threaded an inner part 
like that with a notch with that being the outer nut. And it's got a big head because it has to uh, do that ring that I showed earlier. Okay. All right, so once the power gets to here, it's gonna go all the way through. This is the uh, bottom side. That has a spline in there. And it goes over here into the bottom part. And it also connects with some of the gears that have to do with the down feed. So that, that's how the, the um, torque gets into the spindle and down into, obviously, to the tool. Just a couple last things. If anyone wants to know on my system, this bearing is a 6208Z. One other quick thing before I go. This here, when it's up here, if you notice inside there, there is this here, which is actually a braking material. And there is a handle that rotates left and right. And when it does, it torques that, which then spreads and makes the diameter wider. And it rubs up against the inner course here. And then that'll provide the friction to uh, slow down the, uh, the head. So that's how the brake works. All right, so to summarize, motor to pulley. Pulley, it's on a, uh, I think they call it a spindle sleeve or... Um, that slides up and down based on this rotating and pulling where those screws go through into that sleeve. And as it rotates, it'll pull it up and down. That then moves this up and this part up and down, which then adjusts the uh, shaft, which is there. And then that makes the connection to there. And uh, that's in Bob's your uncle, I guess. All right, guys, I hope that helped. Uh, the brief overview of that J-head. Um, there's some good YouTube videos from H&W Machine, I think, where they, they uh, do more disassembly. But uh, I don't think that they went into the detail I had on this. But All right, appreciate it. Thanks, bye.